let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome. <coughs> Papaji, in the film Call of the Search, you speak about your final teachings. What are they? If you have seen this video, Call of the Search means this is my teaching, Call of the Search. <laughs> what have you seen there? Final teaching is what you are searching, do not search. Therefore, people who are searching after freedom for a long time, for generations, now is the time to call off their search. If the search is called off, whatever you are searching, you stay quiet, don't search. What do you mean by this name is not here? What you have been searching, stop your search. After having stopped any search, what do you call this? And this is my teaching. Call of all search, whatever it is. Then only the mind will be quiet. If you are searching and searching the mind, the mind is not quiet. After having found something, you begin to search something else. You know, from time immemorial, the people have been searching for freedom, enlightenment, and they have not found it, because they wanted to search continue their search, they are not satisfied. Therefore, the only way is stop whatever you are searching, then the mind stops. Mind wants to engage you in searching things, you see. And your search cannot end. The search for the Kings also cannot be ended. They have found one thing, then they want to have another. <coughs> Therefore, if you stop your search, this is peace. This is peace. If you stop your search, this is peace and this is enlightenment. You can try. Just for a moment, stop search, any search, 
for any person, any ideas, any objects. And instantly you will realize something that will be really gracious and great that you can't imagine. This is the teaching. And this is no teaching also. Teaching is to tell you to do something. I don't tell you to do something, anything. Can anything be more final than seeing 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 very seeing why? It was, what is this? My own nature. Seeing my own nature and be lived by that, which means the, the seeing possible. Hmm? Which makes the seeing possible. Which makes this. Can there be anything more final than seeing my own nature and be lived by that? This is, yes, so that's what I tell you, live your own nature, which means the seeing possible. See your own nature. <clears throat> what is nature? Not an object. See the seer. Not something else, the seer itself. Who is seeing the nature? And then also your mind will stop, will not work. If you see who is the seer, not the object, what you are seeing, but that which is seeing, the seer. Who is the seer? Question. Dear Master, I hope you have arrived safely in America. I will be, I will be joining you very soon. But how it is your presence is still felt very strong in Lucknow. Now how to re reconcile the people are very happy in America to receive you and here we feel that you have never gone anywhere. <laughs> Is this what you mean by no separation? <laughs> also, <laughs> 
also today is Saturday. And if you would please, I have written you a song and together with Satyam would love to sing it for you in celebration. This oneness with all my heart and love, you and bow down in gratitude to your beauty and grace. Can you please explain this phenomena that you are still here? <laughs> I have to explain to you. <laughs> I can tell you one what happened story, I can call it. I think any person that you love, you love most, is ever present. This you have to try. Any person that you love most, is ever present. So I am reminded of a story. I was working in south of India. It was it was 52, 1952, <coughs> and South Indian New Year also. And I had some very good friends there who used to invite me when I was on Sunday holiday. They used to invite me in their houses. Now, today it was a festival day. So one was a planter, coffee planter, living in the plantations. And it was about 50 miles from this place where I was living. So he said, you have to come tomorrow, it's our festival, and I have invited my friends, and uh, I will send you a car, and you please come. And it's a nice place on the plantations, and I've invited my neighbors who are also some rubber planters and some tea planters. So we will be a quite a group of about 35 people and my relations also. Everybody will come. So you have to come and we'll wait for you until you come. We are not going to celebrate, not even to eat, eat the lunch. So around 12 is the best time for us. So I had to nod my head. <laughs> Didn't say yes or no, but not my head. So that can work both ways. <laughs> yeah, then another man, another man, I was a fleet owner, fleet of buses flying in the adjoining districts, and very nice man. He said, my wife has invited you, and some uh, hundred people I invited, also my bus drivers, bus conductors, and my agents, everybody will be celebrating, but you have to come. And I have arranged at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Again, I have nodded my head. <laughs> so, otherwise, and a teacher in a college who used to see me whenever I was present in that house. So, so how about having celebrated together and you will see the difference how we in South celebrate the New Year and I do not know how you celebrate in the North. So you please come and we all will be waiting for you. My relations are there and some teachers are also will be there. And you have to give some talk about this celebration, how to celebrate a new year and what's the meaning of the new year. Then, okay, now, next day comes. 
next day comes. I received a phone call from my headquarters to attend a shipment in Mangalore. Ship is waiting and the captain has to give me a draft of the loaded ship. So this ship had to sail for Rotterdam carrying manganese and iron. So I had to go. I was working in the in the corporation and this phone was from the managing director that you have to go there and get into the ship and before closing the hatches the captain has to verify the tear weight to you and what has been loaded. On this basis of the certificate of the captain we can draw 90% from the banks. So I rushed there. So my son, his Sunday was on the ship with the captain. I didn't attend any of these. So Sunday passed and these people now Monday were together all the three in the in the bank, some bank, state bank. So they happened to meet and to draw money. And they said each one is saying it was very nice. Punjaji has come and attended the function. He is looking together. What time? Twelve o'clock. Other man. We may have gone there, then he also come to us little afterwards, he can come. So he came to us also. It was very nice that he explained very well. South Indian and he ate sweets very well. <laughs> and my wife knows he, how much he eats, so she was good giving him a sweet after sweet. <laughs> and third man also, the fleet owner also. So they are now asking the time. The time is telling everybody, tell around 12, around 12. Everybody says 12. Now they decided it's not possible a man after having eaten, eaten, he can go to another function and eat. This is not possible and this is not possible to be present also. Then one man, this teacher said, to be present is, can be possible, but eating is not possible. <laughs> Eating is not possible and we we have to check in, check in from from his office, office people, office people, then where was he? So they all went to my office to see me, see me, to thank me for coming there. So they went there. So my assistant told he was not there. <laughs> At all on Sunday. He was not there here. He went to attend the shipment in Mangalore and still he has not come. This is one version. The people who know me, I am working with them. They are the correct, they are the correct timekeepers. <laughs> they know he's not here. Now this is correct. What about the others now? Others are also very noted people of the district, you see. Now they say, we have to reconcile. It's not possible, but with Punjaji it is possible. <laughs> Everybody agreed. With Punjaji it is possible. <laughs> then he cited, other day I saw him in Mangalore and then I saw him, he stood at the bus stand, he was going to somewhere, I got into the bus, I got into the bus, it is about 120 miles, so when I arrived in bus, 
So he was already there. <coughs> so I asked him, how did you come? Did you come by car? Cars are earlier, quicker than the bus. So I said, yes, yes, I, I was here only. I didn't go. So like these stories, <laughs> stories were fluctuating and I can't solve this myself. <laughs> I can't solve this thing myself. You can't disbelieve others also. You can't dis disbelieve this lady also who is seeing me here. <laughs> How can I disbelieve? Can I disbelieve you if you say, I am speaking to you, I can't disbelieve you. This is for you to decide now. So this cannot be decided. Eel, Eel, who is Eel? Eel, huh? Come here. Eel. Eel. <laughs> what is the story with the Eel now? Eel. Nobody says that. Eel. I was reading, reading it as eagle. Eagle it was written. E-Y. Why? Yes. <laughs> Hebrew, you are Hebrew? You are from Israel? Oh, that's why. Eagle becomes... <laughs> eagle is Israeli name. Huh? Eagle is Israeli name. What is the meaning of ear? Deer. deer. The son of the deer. Eel, Baby, we call eagle, no? Eel, eel means eagle. In Hindi, yes. Eel. Huh? Eel, we call it's this, this same, thing. Yeah. Eagle. Almost hmm? It's almost the same. Same, yeah. I know there have to be eternal happiness. That doesn't come and go. I came two weeks ago, until now I am still unhappy and unsatisfied. Please help. So this, what you have heard, there have to be eternal happiness. <coughs> this you have read in the book, isn't it? In the book. Eternal happiness is in the books only. I read, I read some parts hmm. of the book, but... External happiness is with everybody. External happiness. You have some external happiness in Jerusalem. Yes, sometimes. But sometimes. No, no, always. You left behind some external happiness in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, isn't it? Sometimes happiness. Not some. It's not all the time. So this happiness came with you or not? This, this Tel Aviv happiness has come with you or not? Huh? What? Jerusalem. Jerusalem, okay. Jerusalem is better. <laughs> so she is in Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem. <laughs> you should have brought her along with. <laughs> 
you should have brought this happiness of Jerusalem along with you. Why did you come alone? Because there's no happiness. <laughs> because there's no happiness. There is no. Hmm? There is no happiness. And she was no happy. Uh, eternal happiness is happy, you know. I don't know. That's why you have come here. Yeah. This is the reason. Hmm? This is the reason. And <laughs> so, so you find happy, not happy still, no? You don't find this eternal happiness still because there is external happiness which you left behind. So if you don't think of that happiness, external happiness, if you don't think, then you feel happy. Hmm? It does disturb, but... Hmm? It does disturb, but... It, it disturbs? Yeah, but... All external happiness is disturbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Disturbance means all external happinesses, which you call happiness is not happiness. Hmm? The question is, how would you take it out of my mind? Huh? Ah, cannot go out of the mind. <laughs> So you, if she cannot go out of the mind, so she. <laughs> what? What? That's not she. Happiness must be a she, no? According to grammar, no? Happiness is is feminine, no? But she will know. The happiness is feminine gender, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the masculine, masculine, masculine happiness. Happiness is fe feminine, and masculine. <laughs> Anandam. <laughs> Male gender. Therefore, I say, I say, say, she, for happiness, I say, she. And what you speak is anandam, not happiness. Ananda, anandam, anandam. Uh, what? You don't know, right? Because you know only happiness. <laughs> If you know happiness, you cannot know anandam. Anandam is eternal, eternal bliss, eternal bliss. <laughs> Where are you now? Where are you now? Where did you go now? <laughs> tell me honestly, honestly tell me. <laughs> If you can speak the truth, where did you go now? Where did I go now? Now, when I say happiness is is in Jerusalem. Try huh? Ah, yes. It's right. Right, no? Only try. Hmm? Only try. Only try. Try to go to Jerusalem. No. <laughs> Here you are not to try. <coughs> Only don't think of Jerusalem now. <laughs> Tell me, don't think of Jerusalem for one second and tell me who you are, what do you feel? Hmm? Tell me, you are a young boy. Hmm? Again you have gone there, no? <laughs> 
again you have gone there. <laughs> again Jerusalem. No, no Jerusalem. Then where did you go? You must have gone somewhere. <laughs> if not to Jerusalem, where, where did you go? The mind cannot keep quiet, isn't it? How difficult it is to get rid of your past, past attachments, you see. <laughs> no one could get rid of the past attachments. See his own beauty here and now, <laughs> no one is prepared. <laughs> My beloved Papaji, what is the connection between smoking terrace and self-inquiry? Why do Lord Shiva, Shiva Sadhu smoke chillum endlessly? <laughs> do the trance induced by charas make one more awake or more asleep? Is there any benefit for Westerners here who come to attend your satsang to use this cherish. Does it help or hinder our search for this? <laughs> My dearest Papaji, thank you for shower of jealous. <laughs> Yeah. 
It looks like a good experience of Chilam. <laughs> you can, I can find out from the eyes. Huh? These are bamboli eyes. <laughs> But there are so, so many questions. <laughs> now, first question. <laughs> When did you write this question? <laughs> when did you write these kind of questions? Come only when you have a chillum in hand. <laughs> I wrote before Satsang. And before? In the other room. Huh? In the other room, before Satsang, I wrote the question. This question you were writing? Yeah. Who was with you? <laughs> A whole crowd of people. Huh? Huh? Yes, there was one man, he killed a man I know. <laughs> he must be with you. Kill him as if they? Yes, they kill him. So Not different. Huh? No. Already somebody told me, somebody told me, <laughs> that there is chillum here in the restaurant. <laughs> she says... I didn't see it, Baba. <laughs> Someone told me, I said, no, it's not possible. Not possible. But no. <laughs> in that room, no? <laughs> so what is the connection between smoking cherries and self-inquiry. By smoking cherish, also you have no inquiry at all. <laughs> you have no inquiry. <laughs> you don't make inquiry. <laughs> and let alone the self-inquiry, <laughs> you don't have any inquiry at all. <laughs> Why do Lord Shiva's sadhus smoke endlessly the chillum? Because Shiva is Bambole himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, tell, and this chillum was introduced, introduced, still it is prevailing among this cult. Among this cult of sadhus, it is still prevailing. <laughs> if you have a smoke on a chillum, you lose your mind. No, there's no doubt about it. You forget everything. And in the beginning, that was meant to meditate. Have a smoke of chillum to forget anything outside. Then meditate. That was the purpose. Not enjoyment only. Now purpose, that purpose is lost now. So therefore it is not helping. The people who smoke, they continually smoking and they don't speak anything else. You must have seen in Haridwar, no? Haridwar, Rishikesh. Here also, if you go near the Gomti bank, bank of this river, you see there are constantly smoking. And they thought, this is their duty to smoke away. Many people like this thing. <coughs> but they are, they don't belong to the people who are, who are just inquiring about enlightenment or anything else. 
just for the taste of charam because they feel happy. There is sort of happiness because when you forget everything, you are happy. And this happiness they attribute to freedom, yes. That is a false drug happiness, you see. <laughs> Trances in induced make one more awake or more asleep. <coughs> Neither awake nor asleep. Neither awake nor asleep. That is sleep also is not sleep. That is kind of Unconsciousness, you see. Man is unconscious of anything. Is there any benefit for the Westerners here who come to attend your satsang to use this drug? I don't advise at all because I have seen very bad results of all the drugs. When this drug, drug, just was invented in 68, I was in Rishikesh. And the founder of this drug, Timothy Leary, you know, Timothy Leary was the founder of this drug. And he was a chemist in the Harvard University. So he found this chemical, LST, LST, lysergic hallucinogenic <coughs> drug. So when thousands of people came to India by road itself, by road they came and from via Iran, Afghanistan and India they entered. And some people came even without passports because in those days passports were Nobody was asking passports. Very recently, visas and passport have started. You can cross the country without passport. How could they come otherwise from Iran to Afghanistan, Afghanistan to Balochistan, then Pakhtunistan, now Pakistan, then India, you see. And they settled down because Timothy used to say, <coughs> if there is any heaven in the world, it is Rishikesh, where you can walk by the banks of the holy river and meditate. That's the only place which gives you peace of mind. So all the young girls and young boys came in like swarms here to India. And they were smoking, having a trip on LSD. And I had a talk with quite a few young people and some were teachers, some were teachers, some were very intelligent people also. And what, during the trip, six hour trip of LSD, and they were giving me very good experiences, very good experiences they were giving. But uh, later on, when the government of America found that these people who is on a trip, he speaks the truth. So if our CIA people are given this LSD, he will speak the truth. Being in the investigation or intelligence department, you can't let out your secrets. So they banned this drug there. They banned it there. You can't use it. This was banned. And Timothy was arrested. And his co-founder came to see me also and we had a talk on this. Co-founder means what was Alpert. Alpert, yes. He was a co-alpert. He was also in the 
in in a school, same Harvard school he was also. So we had a talk on this thing. <clears throat> and he said there is a benefit. We can we can use this drug for for enlightenment. I said this is not true. Because I don't find any person who was on the drug has been enlightened. <clears throat> I was in Rishikesh and I am studying from beginning itself. And then this trip has to be conducted under an expert and only thrice, three times. But then I have not seen anyone benefited. Then he said, I have taken more than 300 times and still I take. So along with him, many of his students came and they asked me in the satsang if we can use LSD because we attend better satsang if we are on LSD. <coughs> then one man from LA, Los Angeles, I allowed him, okay, you can do it. Because you can do it and try and I will also try. <laughs> So he was, I knew, I said, you don't tell anyone else, you sit in this corner and you meditate. Ram Charan knows, he's laughing. He's, he's, he was just, he was, eh? I have to take care of him. Yes, yeah, yeah, he took care of him. So he was meditating, satsang was over, satsang was over, he was staying in our, our clerk's hotel. Clark's Hotel, and then I told him, you have to go, and he didn't reply. Now, lunch time came, I said, you take lunch, he didn't take lunch also, now it is evening, I said, he must. Then I found, is he dead or alive? <laughs> <laughs> then Ram Charan was there, I said, I don't want to keep him in the house. You bring the rickshaw, cycle rickshaw, and load him. So three people loaded him, and the rickshaw driver was saying, I can't take him alone because he's falling on my back. <laughs> so Ram Charan, he stood behind to hold his neck. <laughs> One man on this side so that he doesn't slip this side, and the three people went with him to reach him to the Clark's Hotel. So this is the benefit of his drug. <laughs> so there should be three people to look after you, look after your meditation. <laughs> and one man in Rishikesh, he was living in an ashram. I was also in the same ashram. So his name was, his name was, uh, he was from London. <laughs> Wait. I knew his name also. Very young boy. Very young boy. And then <clears throat> the Swami of the ashram complained to me, who was in the last line of the rooms, one man was was very noisy, shouting and howling. Who was he? Ah, John was his name. John, John, <coughs> Johnson. <coughs> and uh, you call him, I don't want him here, I, I didn't sleep in the night. <clears throat> and other people also complained, somebody was was shouting in the night, whole night he was shouting. Then he was a very good boy, he used to go with me to swim in the Ganga also. Then I called, Johnny, you come here. What happened in the night? You, now Swami wants you, you go and see him, because you have been shouting in the night, barking also. So Swami wants to turn you out. So what happened? What happened? <laughs> so he said, during the trip, during the trip I thought of a monkey. 
during the trip. So in the night, this, this was a very big tree and he could climb a tree and on the branches he was hanging down <laughs> with legs, with his leg on the branch and hanging down and shouting whole night. I said, you are doing? He said, I do not know for shouting, but only I know that I was a monkey whole night. And then when my consciousness came after in the morning, then I could not get down. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought somebody has put me on the tree. Then slowly someone threw a rope on me, so by the rope I came. So that much nature is changed. He became a monkey. He says, I, I was a monkey in the night, so I was a howling like a monkey. She so I said, this, now the Swami is, now I heard the story, now I went, this boy is very good, where can he live now? So I told the Swami, Swami, this boy was, he was speaking in English, he was singing a song, <laughs> that this Swami is a very good Swami, very nice Swami, the one only in the world who is so compassionate and only one thing, he is charging me two rupees per day rent. For that Swami is not good, otherwise he is very good. <laughs> so he is a bad Swami because he charges two rupees and I don't, I can't pay two rupees. I have to smoke charas. <laughs> and he takes away for simply for the room. And I go on the tree. Last night I was on the tree, why should he charge me two rupees? <laughs> so I said, Swamiji, he was praising you. Only he has a complaint for two rupees. Otherwise, the Swami is the best Swami in Rishikesh. He says, okay, you tell him. He need not pay any rent. <laughs> and that he should come and eat in my mess. So when people go to Rishikesh, I give the address of this, this <laughs> one. <laughs> so this is LSD. <laughs> so there's no benefit for the Westerners particularly. Somehow I've seen the difference. The Indians are smoking and nothing happens to them. But I have seen the Westerners who smoke. I do not know why. It doesn't suit them. They become so skeletons and die. <laughs> but these people, <laughs> you see, they are keeping good health also by smoking. <laughs> All the bambores in, this, in Haridwar are quite healthy also. I, I have seen them smoking for the last sixty years. One Baba, sixty years I see him, steadily smoking, always smoking. But Westerners, quite Westerners, they, many have died. I do not know why it, this difference. Does it help or hinder our search? Absolutely, it stops your search. Stops your search. And first of all, destroys your health also. And if your health is bad, you can't make any search also. Thank you. Hmm? <coughs> Now you don't smoke, eh? Now try to, slowly you try to reduce your chillum.
टू थर्सडे नाइट वेन एवर ले माइंड साइड मेडिटेशन शक्ति ब्लिस पीस वुड कम देन माइंड वुड बी पिकड अप एंड ड्राफ्ट वॉज ए डांस ऑफ लव ऑफ वेलकम टू दी फर्स्ट बिलवेड देर वॉज रिजॉयसिंग एंड प्ले ऑफ शाइनेस and conscious sleep then towards dawn again the aft heard inner sound and bottom fell out all objects subject settled in grass all known vanished utterly and absolutely whether whatever a trace in this silent emptiness no mind no moorings anywhere no desire no aversion no objects nor persons no concepts no thoughts no memories no notions no past present and future no experience no comparisons are boundaries anywhere no i no this no individuals no passions no yours and mine no relations with or to anything no persons no words in this silent boundless space nectar neither dark nor light nothing at all not even sadguru beloved could be found nothing at all familiar familiar nor the concept no path and no sign for hours only awareness who this silent emptiness into which all worlds had vanished could not even move or find this body mind movement much later in the day came <coughs> dim awareness <coughs> of forms but these were as if transparent appearing over the nothingness without name without pushing without connection something something artificial mechanical rigid connection to persons i concept the past memory to mind future next hour some totally unreal took place no i no person no word no thought unable to pick up old ways affection thinking of i or you yours or mine without person without relation knowing all objects i some stuff i some stuff without desire or expectation without any many so 
this the core dilemma or test or purpose. This life since early childhood is laid bare and exposed and all else. Identification, identification, and still. This letter is smells neurosis. So, my neurosis is psychosomatism. This paper is reading the letters. So they can they can write a neurotic can write like this thing, and you feel I have seen some neurotics. And they speak very well as if they are Ganis, <laughs> as they are Mahatmas, yes, yes. So it's very difficult to know a neurotic and a Gyani, the enlightened man <laughs> and a neurotic. Now, thanks to psychology and psychiatry, they have found the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the people, and still, many, many people follow the neurotics. Many people follow the neurotics. And there were no difference. Yeah. You're the first person who said it was yeah. real. Yes. <laughs> that it was the truth. <laughs> I'll give you medicine. <laughs> I'll give you medicine. I'll give you medicine. <laughs> Since when you have this trouble? Your mother was suffering from this? No, I think so, Papa. Your mother, I think so, I think so. Your mother my, was suffering? My mother told me, huh? uh, after I came to India, my mother told me she was also had madness. Huh? My mother, my mother, after I came to India, huh? my mother always seemed very strange to me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> she was very quiet. <laughs> Yeah. And she seemed very peaceful. Your mother told you. And she seemed untouched. And mm. after I came to India, Papa, my yeah. mother told why me. Why she? When she you, had been seeing Jesus. Why she had thrown you to India? <laughs> why, why she had thrown you to India? Why? What part? Why she had thrown you to India? What part? She wanted to get rid of you. That's all. <laughs> and she told you, stay quiet, no? And then it yeah, made you yeah, well behave. She told you she stick. She told me many things. Uh, what? But I thought they didn't make sense, but they were very uh. wise. <laughs> she told you many things. <laughs> which which things she told you? She told me to stay quiet. Uh, quiet. So <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, there was a but, time. There was a time when I would see demons coming out of the world. Ah uh, yes. And she told me they were. <laughs> Achha, achha. Before this, I had just seen very beautiful beings, very beautiful things, and then <laughs> these demons. <laughs> My mother told me they weren't real. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and I shouldn't pay any attention to them. <laughs> <laughs> did you? How many times did you? Were you bite? Were you biting your mother? What? Were you biting your mother? No. no yeah. I don't remember. Because she told you stay quiet. You must have been biting. Maybe I was. Yes, yes. You must have been biting because your mouth shows that you are. <laughs> You know, many people came here from America also, from England also. Just they, they found, they sent to me many people who were schizophrenic and paranoid and psychosomatic. I told you, many people came to me, they stayed and they became well. Yes, yes one psychiatric from New York, he also... What? He also came. Stayed for six months. One from Switzerland. Eh? One from Switzerland came. Tiri is named Tiri. Tiri. Switzerland, Tiri, yes. Eh? So he became very six months. <laughs> Yes. He was psychiatric himself. Hmm? <laughs> okay. So you come tomorrow, I will give you medicine. <laughs> yes. Okay. When shall I come tomorrow? Tomorrow at zero hour. <laughs> I should come at zero. Hmm? <laughs> I should come at zero. Yes, yes. Zero. at that time you come in the zero. Yes. Zero hour you come, don't come on the clock hours. <laughs> <laughs> this is zero hour, is this room? No? Acha, I will invite Mr. Ramsey to give a... Well, I don't find it. Huh? Ramsey will come because today is Saturday and you introduce yourself. You leave this place now. So, First of all, you have to introduce yourself to us. I only heard that you are a great comedian and a writer and a singer. So we welcome you here and we could not give you time because we wanted to set apart a time for you and you please introduce your art to us. Dragon, 
Grandes bandas, dandadas, 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 That. You are <laughs> so then I have to stand up. <laughs> it's about a place very nearby. <laughs> it is a song about a man, me, for instance. And I sit around and around and around the Himalayas. Uh, on the Mount Everest and the highest stuff, there's a beautiful girl and her name is Maya. But I don't dare. I think, okay, I take the first step and I've got to go there. But perhaps I'll fall down. And perhaps I hope that she will sway to me then. I don't dare to. But okay, okay. And I said to myself, I have to go to the Himalaya, so I went. And, but perhaps I'm not the right person. And I think I should know myself. And, and I, I'm not going to lie to you there. I stay downstairs. Because with you, I'm going to have my Okay! Beginnen bellen om best te treden. Oké, okay. we zijn wat te heuvel. Nee, maar als ik bom, 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 bom val naar beneden, dan hoop ik dat ze dan wel zo zwaaien. Ja. Ze woont daar boven op het hoogste plateau. Dus ze rotsen en de gletsjes en ze kijken. Het is een hele klim, dat is wel zo. Maar ik moet en ik zal met Maya vrijen. Oké, okay. ik moet nu maar de wens op gaan. Oké, okay. het heeft geen zin om hier te blijven staan. Mag de zon met zijn stralen boven. Het gladde ijs maar niet moet glijden. Ze woont daar alleen zonder vriend en buur. Ik voel wat heel toe, ik leef het zelfs. Ze woont daar alleen zonder vriend en buur. Ik vind dat ze ze echt moet gaan verhuizen. Oké, okay, ik weet dat ik ben aangegaan. Oké, okay, ik moet er nu maar even zeggen aan. Maar als ik denk aan hen die mij voor zeggen gaan, dan zie ik al de omgevallen kruisen. Misschien. Ben ik niet te geschikt te verrieten voor de bergen van de Himalaya. Het is goed als een mens zichzelf kent en jammer voor de kleine lieve Maya. Oké, okay, zou je liever zien dat ik nu loog? Oké, okay, zou je liever hebben dat ik je bedroog? Want kleine Maya, je bent me echt te hoog. Want Maya, met jou ga ik naar de Haaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
<laughs> when it storms around your ship, go along. Go along with the storm. Because your ship is too little and nature is too strong. You cannot fight it. And when it storms in your head, go along, go along with the storm. Because the rock won't move for you. The wind will be there anyway. And your ship might nearly break down. But when it storms in your heart, go along with the storm. And don't put your anchor out. Because the time will change the tide. <coughs> All that stormed on your ship, Amen, Amen. Met the storm, the fool, nein, will the sea. Dann der Nacht ist der Gold, und der Klein ist ja Gold, und der Tät soll der Tät wieder gehen. Als es stürmt und gehofft, Amen, Amen, mit der Sturm, die fuhrt dein Wille See. Er versetzt dir mal nicht, tegen Verdriet, denn der Tät soll der Tät wieder gehen. Wann der Klipp hat ich gesehen, En de wind gaat hier opzij, je schip wat hard slaat zij, maar de storm gaat niet voorbij. Het geweld, het gevaar, en angst die hoort erbij, je hulp krijgt ooit erbij. Maak de zeilen nu maar vrij, als het stormt rond je hart. Ga mee, ga mee, met de storm die je voert naar een wilde zee. Zet de anker niet uit, red niet je hart, want de tijd zal het zijn. Yeah. I don't know any English songs. I only have been singing Very good. <laughs> and tunes. You wanted to come, no?